The ESP32 is a very powerful microcontroller with a fast processor, a lot of memory, and with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Surely that must mean that it's not suitable for battery operation. Well, actually, no. The ESP32 can run on batteries for a long time if you carefully manage how long you use the CPU and Wi-Fi. In a nutshell, you want to keep the processor in a sleep mode for as long as possible. And when you actually need to power on the CPU, do it as shortly as possible. The same thing goes for Wi-Fi. Turn it on only when you have to and for as little long as possible. Additionally, the ESP32 supports various power modes. Let's go over them right now. And to make it easier to understand, I've visualized the components inside the ESP32 so you can see what happens at different modes. The heaviest power mode is called active. In this mode, the processor is turned on as well as the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radio. This comes with a power consumption of up to 260 milliamps, which could deplete a 2000 milliamp hour battery in just under eight hours. However, you don't need Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to be on all the time. If you turn them off, the chip switches to modem sleep. This reduces the power consumption to 20 milliamps and you can still use the full power of the processor. And if you reduce the clock speed of the processor, you can get that down to as low as 3 milliamps. Not bad, but still nowhere near good enough. Next up, light sleep. In this state, the main processor is paused and is waiting for events to wake it up. This can be a timer or an external interrupt, like the press of a button. In this state, the contents of the memory will be retained when the CPU wakes up. Power consumption of light sleep is around 0.8 milliamps. To reduce that even further, you can go into deep sleep, a mode in which the processor and most of the peripherals are turned off to conserve power. The chip can still wake up from external interrupts because the ULP, the ultra low power coprocessor, is still turned on. Power consumption at this stage is 0.15 milliamps. Further reduction of power consumption can be achieved by turning the ULP off and only keeping the RTC timer and memory on. This results in a power consumption of just 10 microamps. The final power mode is hibernation, which turns off everything except the RTC timer. That way the chip can still wake up after a certain amount of time, but no memory is kept powered on, so you can't preserve data during hibernation. Power consumption here is just 5 microamps. So in short, deep sleep or hibernation is the way to go if you want to preserve battery life. But that means you have to get creative. How can you sleep as long as possible and use the Wi-Fi as little as possible while still achieving your goals? In the upcoming videos, I will focus more on how to use deep sleep and how to get around some of the limitations.